Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto, your home for the most detailed motorcycle content on the net. Thank you so much for tuning in today and if you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing if you appreciate this kind of content. So today we are continuing the multi-part series on the Aprilia Touareg 660, which I have purchased uh, for long-term review and testing on this channel. Now, if you're landing on this video first, I would recommend and going to go back and watch the series in order, and I will be linking all the videos in the series here below. So in today's episode on the Touareg 660, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be covering the specs of the bike. We're gonna take a tour and show you the bike's features. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So let's just go ahead and get started. All right, here she is. So I apologize for filming in the garage today, but if I film outside, the lighting conditions are just not very good and the video will not come out very evenly. So apologies for that. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with the specs and features of the bike. So let's start with the pricing. So in this acid gold and black color, or you can get a red and black color, that comes in at $11,999 US. Uh, if you want the kind of the white and blue with the silver wheels, I think that's an additional six or seven hundred dollars uh, to get that color scheme. So I opted for the acid gold and black, which I think looks really cool. I like the contrast of it. Let's talk about the weight. So the weight of this bike is 450 pounds with a full tank of gas. That is about 204 kilograms. So at that weight, it really comes in kind of at that sweet spot on the smaller end of the midsize adventure bike spectrum. So you have bikes like the Africa Twin coming in around 500 pounds for the base model. Tiger 900 is about 500 pounds. The KTM 890 Adventure, which is actually sitting over there, that bike is 470 pounds. A Tenere 700 is 450 pounds. So again, for a twin cylinder adventure bike, this is pretty light and very competitive in the segment. Let's talk about the engine on the Touareg 660. So this is not a brand new engine for Aprilia. They ha they've had it out for some time and they have it in sports bikes and naked bikes and other bikes. But please do know that the engine in the Touareg has been retuned, different cams, different components uh, to make it more suitable for adventure bike use. So there's more power, more torque at low RPM and it, the, the power delivery is not as peaky as those other bikes. So it's been changed quite a bit. So it's a double overhead cam, liquid cooled parallel twin, four valves, a cylinder, six 659 cc and it has a 13.5 to 1 compression ratio meaning that you're going to need to use 91 premium octane gas power and torque so it's claimed at 80 horsepower or about 60 kilowatts and that comes in at 9,000 rpm torque is 52 foot pounds or 71 newton meters it's 6,500 rpm and of course that's hooked up to a six speed transmission uh, with a chain final drive and it does have a wet clutch with a slip assist function all right, let's talk about the chassis of the bike. So it's a one piece steel frame. It does not have a bolt on detachable subframe, which I know is a bit of a disappointment for some people. Uh, let's look at the rake and trail figures. So the rake and trail is 26.7 degrees or four and a half inches. And that puts it um, really competitive with other bikes in this class. It has a 60 inch wheelbase on this motorcycle. So let's start looking at the suspension, wheels, tires, things like that. So the front suspension is by Kayak. The rear suspension is also the same brand. Uh, very good, very high quality suspension components. It's a 43 millimeter uh, fork, which is a little bit smaller uh, than some of the bikes you see. That's not the travel of the fork, by the way. When you hear that, like someone saying, oh, 43 millimeter, 48 millimeter fork, that just means the thickness of these tubes here. So be that what it is, let's look at the travel. So 9.4 inches or 240 millimeters of suspension travel front and back. Now that puts it in line with, with uh, the highest travel bikes out there, just like KTM's 890 Adventure R. This has more travel than an Africa Twin. It has more travel than a Tiger 900, a lot more travel than a Tenere 700. So you get the idea. It's one of the most, uh, the longest suspension travel in this class, which is really a great thing when you consider the seat height is relatively low, which we'll show here soon. Also, your front suspension is fully adjustable. So not only do you have a preload adjustment, which I think is really, really nice to have. Most bikes don't have that. You have compression and rebound adjustment as well. The rear shock is a mono shock. Also, Kayaba, same travel, 240 mil millimeters or 9.4 inches. And you have adjustments for rebound, uh, compression damping, and preload, which is great to have that. The suspension you can see down through here does use a linkage design, so it's not like the KTM with the PDS system. And if you wanna lower or raise the bike, you potentially could do that by changing the linkage. 
Let's look at the brakes on the Touareg. So you have 300 millimeter twin discs up front with Brembo four piston calipers. So that's really nice to have. However, it is a uh, axial mount caliper. It's not a radial mount that you get on some of the higher end bikes, but the brakes are plenty powerful and we'll show that during the riding uh, portion of this series. And then our front tire, of course, it's an off-road friendly 21 inch front tire. It's a 90 width front tire and it is a tubeless tire, which a lot of people are gonna be rejoicing to hear that it's tubeless. And you can see they took the spokes to the outer edge of the rim here, which is a good strong design and means that the rim does not rely on any sort of rubber tape or any sort of weird sealing uh, material to try to seal the air in. Unlike the KTM, which we won't talk about, which always has issues with that. Moving around to the back, you have a single disc rotor, uh, single piston caliper there, and it's a 150 width tire. It's an 18 inch rear wheel. So that's really nice to see that 18 inch, which gives you more off-road tire friendly choices as opposed to a 17 inch uh, wheel you get on some bikes. Let's talk about the seat height and the fuel capacity. So you can see it's this long sort of one piece seat here with all this uh, gold accent on it, which I think looks really cool. It is a 33.8 inch or 858 millimeter seat height, which is pretty competitive, pretty low for this type of bike. When you consider it's ground clearance and suspension travel, that's very impressive that they were able to get the seat pretty low and not too high like some of the other adventure bikes out there. Fuel tank capacity is 4.8 gallons or about eight 18 liters of fuel, which is, I think, the perfect amount because it gives you a 200 to 250 mile range, uh, but it's not so much fuel that it makes the bike heavy. And when I do the tour, I'll show you kind of how this fuel is carried. The fuel is not all up here, like on some bikes like the Tenere 700. All right, I think it's time now we switch from the specs and we take a tour around the bike, kind of highlighting some of the interesting and unique features of the Touareg. So let's get started here at the front. All right, starting our tour at the front of the bike. So this bike doesn't have the beak that some bikes do, like my GS sitting there. It has this sort of very tiny little beak here. Uh, it has a low front fender. Now, for serious off-road people, this could be a concern with mud and rocks getting clogged in here. Time will tell if that's gonna be an issue for people. I think it definitely could be an issue. On some bikes, I've seen where they have a riser kit, or some people end up converting to a high front fender on certain models of bikes. Um, although I do like the look of the low front Front fender and it's good for aerodynamics, I am concerned about getting clogged with debris and hard off-road riding. So more on that later. We've talked about the wheels, tires, brakes, suspension, those sorts of things. I wanna kinda of show you the lighting of the bike. So it has LED turn signals. I've got them turned on here. They kinda of look, they don't necessarily look like LEDs when you see them, but they are, and I think that's a great thing to have. You can also see that the bike uses this unique um, kind of chevron pattern running light here. I know it's kind of bright on the camera. This is actually in the low intensity position. And what's kind of unique is that there's a switch up here on the handlebar that allows you there. Now it's in lower position. You can see it's got two different brightnesses of the running light, which you can cycle. And then of course, if you turn the bike on, it's gonna turn on the low beam headlight. And the low beam and high beam are all LED on this bike, which is really, really great to have. Now, since I've got the lights on, before I turn them off, let me show you the tail light and the rear turn signal. So you can see the license plate holder here, very, very sturdy. The tail light is this kind of two piece design here. And if I can try to reach the brake lever here, to show you, here's where the uh, actual brake light lights up back on this part and LED turn signals in the back as well. Okay, now with the lights turned off, we can continue going around the bike. The radiator is a one piece flat radiator here in the front, and it does have this pretty stout uh, plastic guard to protect from, from debris. You can see up here, it's kind of got some venting and under here, you're gonna have fuel tank wiring, different components like that. You can see the triple clamp here. We've talked about the headlight. The windshield is, a fixed position. It does not have any adjustments for the windshield, which is kind of kind of a bummer, but at this price point, I can totally understand them not being able to afford to have that kind of feature built in. We'll cover the electronics and the TFT uh, sort of at the end of the video. So let's walk our way through the handlebars and hand guards. So these are more of a wind deflector. They're not gonna protect you uh, off-road. And I know from people who have these bikes that these will snap off if you drop the bike. So not very strong. Those are gonna have to get replaced, but they look cool and they do definitely deflect the wind. Looking at the controls and cockpit, you've got this rocker switch here for on off start. This uh, is your riding mode button, which works really well. The headlight selector I talked about, you can see very simple tubular uh, aluminum handlebar here, the handlebar clamps, the key, 
old fashioned key. It's not gonna break, not gonna go out on you like some of the keyless ride bikes like my GS. Uh, over here, you've got a horn, turn tail, you've got a four-way controller button. We'll show you that here in a minute. And a cruise control, which really reminds me of the cruise control uh, setup on the KTM 890. Uh, the mirrors actually remind me very much of the mirrors on the BMW. The shape is almost the same. That's kind of interesting there. Maybe they use the same company to buy the mirrors from. We've talked about the suspension. What I like about the suspension is you have the preload adjustment and then the rebound uh, adjustment is here and a compression adjustment is here. So you don't have to go uh, crawl underneath the fork like you do on a lot of bikes or on the ground to get to those rebound adjustments. So I appreciate that. The fuel tank here. So the fuel tank on this bike is interesting. You think all the fuel's up here. Actually, this is the air box under here up high. So it keeps the weight lower down. The fuel tank actually runs down through here and then actually comes all the way down under here. So it's a very interesting design. They tried to centralize and lower the mass uh, around the engine of the bike. So that's that contributes to why this bike actually handles very well and feels lighter than it says on paper. To get into the fuel tank, first of all, it's kind of weird because this thing spins. This fuel uh, cap spins here, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you open that, you unlock it, and then the fuel cover comes off. But then, you know, are you going to drop this? You're going to have to find a way to put it. I kind of wish it was like a flip cover or a flip fuel tank like most bikes. But everything, as I'm manipulating everything, everything feels very good, high quality, well made. Uh, unlike some bikes we won't mention, KTM, uh, where things feel cheap and chintzy, this doesn't have that feeling at all. It doesn't quite feel up to the BMW level, but I'd say it's somewhere between KTM and BMW in terms of the fit and finish. We've covered the specs of the engine already. Let's talk about the skid plate and the exhaust. You can see the exhaust coming out here. You've got a spin-on automotive type oil filter here. Uh, the skid plate, yeah, yeah, it's a little flimsy. It's a two-piece skid plate and it has rubber. You can see it flexes because it has rubber dampers uh, between, it, between uh, the skid plate and the engine to help from, for impact, absorption. But it's a pretty thin skid plate, as you can see here, and I'm not sure. I mean, if you, you don't wanna slam this bike into boulders and drag it over rocks, you know, if you're gonna be like Chris Birch or, or trials riding or something, you're gonna have to put on a better skid plate. But for the average off-road rider, just doing some uh, dirt roads and gravel roads, I think this will be more than adequate. However, I'll be looking to change it out because I do plan to uh, ride this bike pretty hard off-road. Okay, so we're here with uh, Kurt. Uh, Kurt owns Black Dog Cycle Works, maker of the best skid plates, foot pegs in the world. Um, so Kurt, can you talk about, we're looking at my Aprilia 660, looking at the skid plate, looking at the foot pegs. Can you tell us kind of what you found so far? So uh, we found that our foot pegs that we made for the Yamaha T7 actually fit perfectly on the Aprilia 660. So that's good news for us. They are a half inch lower than stock and a lot larger than the, the stock foot pegs as well. So that's great news. Um, looking at the skid plate, this is the first chance we've had to uh, take the stock skid plate off. It's a two-piece design. Um, it's very thin, like aluminum foil, like most stock skid plates. It's interesting because I saw all these exposed nuts on the bottom and was very concerned about that. Um, attaching to the motor, but it doesn't. It just attaches to these bumpers uh, here that rest against the motor. And then you've got two bolts in the back and two bolts in the front that attach onto the, the little framework that they have, little brackets that attach to the oil pan. So, um, and then they've got a separate piece that Alex has already broken, uh, which is no surprise, that just slips over the header pipe like this and it attaches at the front. So Yeah, I just fell in a little bit of rocks and this already this already broke off yeah. here. So yeah, it's all really thin and it's just cosmetic. Yeah, there's, you can see how thin it is. Th th yeah, there's really no protection to it whatsoever. So um, for guys that are gonna ride off road, is this gonna be adequate? Not a chance. It's okay. I would not trust this at all. Um, for any kind of off-road. I mean, it, it, we refer to these as more or less a splash guard because that's about all it is. It's protecting, you know, water and like small rocks from hitting the motor, but that's about it. Brake lever here. What I like about the brake lever is it's already set pretty high, which is good when you're standing up to reach the lever. Nice big traction pad on the brake lever. And this flips over. You can see it's got serrations here on both sides. That means that you can flip this over to raise the surface up for off-road riding. 
Really great little feature that I truly appreciate. The foot pegs, I'm gonna pull these rubbers out as soon as I'm done filming this video, but I wanted to film the bike completely stock to show you how it's set up. These rubbers come out very, very easily, uh, revealing a pretty decent size uh, foot peg. Not, not too tiny, I probably would like a little bit bigger, but I could totally make this work for my off-road riding. You can see the rear brake. Um, uh, reservoir there. Kind of a plastic protector here over the frame where your boot's going to be rubbing against it, so I appreciate that. The passenger pegs are bolt-on, not well done, so that's a great design. Although it is a one-piece frame, at least they gave you removable passenger pegs. The exhaust here, you can see, very smart that they ran this up high, and it's also bolted on, so the, the, the hanger, the exhaust hanger, you can see, is bolted on to the frame, so it's replaceable. Unlike the Tenere 700, one of my huge complaints with that bike, among many things, was the exhaust was way down low, and it has this hanger that always bends, and it's welded as part of the frame. That was a really stupid design. Uh, kind of some exhaust guards here. You can see the passenger pegs we've talked about. We've talked about rear tire, wheel, brakes, those sorts of things. Now, one thing I definitely want to cover, if you look at a couple things here, you notice there's no plastic like side panels here, um, which is kind of interesting. They left this kind of bare. I think it's the minimalist approach to this bike, keeping it narrow, keeping it lightweight. You can see there's definitely attachment points here if you were going to put on racks and luggage and things like that. I would like to have a more pronounced grab handle and also for passenger accommodations, which I will be showing in one of the next videos. Seat's pretty thin back here. Now, it does ha actually have a grab handle. If you can see in here, they have this kind of part of the frame where you can reach in with your hand and move the bike around and the, this is also where your passenger would hold on as well so it's kind of hidden but it does have that feature which i think is kind of cool We've talked about the stuff at the back let's see the seat comes off here uh, with the key actually let me show you since this is a full tour of the bike let me show you how this looks under here so it's a one-piece seat, comes off very easily. And then under the seat, you can see typical warning labels, wear helmet, blah, blah, blah. This is something to do with the fuel. So like I said, the fuel tank runs from here, but then it centralizes the mass and runs all down through here under where you sit. So good mass centralization. The battery, easily accessible right under the seats. The fuses are here. Uh, I like how they give you like the tire pressures, the valve clearance um, specifications, what kind of oil to use, chain tension, all load ratings, all that kind of stuff, very easy to see under here. So simple layout. There's not a lot of storage under here, so you're not really gonna be able to keep keep much of anything underneath. Let me throw the seat back on here. Seat clicks back into place very, very easily. I really appreciate that. Uh, the kickstand, the kickstand on this bike is super, like super burly and thick. Look how big and strong that is. It has a pretty big foot, but also I've never seen a kickstand that was so solidly made and attached. I really appreciate that. <laughs> it's a good, good thing that they did there. Uh, shifter, easy to adjust here with this, uh, this rod here. You could loosen these bolts, adjust your shifter up and down. You can see the swing arm pivot bolt, more guards to protect your boot. A hydraulic preload adjuster. Thank God. I love, love having that because you can adjust the rear preload for passengers and luggage just by twisting this. So that's really great. Uh, chain, of course, chain covered there. Uh, we'll talk about the gearing when we ride the bike. The bike's actually geared pretty low uh, for off-road riding. Uh, you can see some plumbing here for like some of the, uh, you know, fuel emissions, evaporative equipment, things like that. You can see this is the water pump. We've talked about the radiator already. One kind of interesting thing I noticed that when I first saw this, I was like, oh, these must be like cooling exhaust outlets for the radiator, but they're actually sealed up in here. The air doesn't pass through. So kind of interesting here that they have the color coordination, but the air doesn't seem to pass through there. And engine heat is a major complaint um, from the riders who own this bike. So we'll find out more about that uh, as we start riding, putting some more miles on this bike. All right, now let's cover the dashboard of the bike. So it's a TFT screen, which is a really big upgrade if you're looking at this compared to something like the Tenere 700. You've got this bar here for a phone or GPS mount, which is great that they give you that and you don't have to do aftermarket modifications in order to do that. When you cycle the key on, it boots up very fast. You can see their kind of motto there, be a racer. Now I have the screen set to nighttime mode, which is the dark background, but you can change it. If you want to change it, you can go in here and I'll show you this menu here in a minute. I can go into mode. I can switch it to auto or daytime. Let me show you the daytime mode. So if I do that, you can see it's this white background. I prefer to have the dark background at all times. So let me go back in here 
and change this day, night. Okay. So now we're back where we started. So here's the look at the dashboard here. You've got a clock, thermometer, the writing mode. You can scroll through this uh, indication here on the left, different readouts, speeds, fuel consumption, tr your traction control level. And you should note that when you're in the traction control, when you have that selected, you can then use the cruise control up and down to change this on the fly as you're riding how much traction control intervention you want. That's amazing. That's a super awesome feature and we'll talk more about that later. So if I go down here, odometer, and then you can cycle to menu B, which gives you a different uh, list of things to, to go through here. So you can customize these things as well. So what else is on the dashboard? Uh, you can see there's a fuel gauge here, kind of small, but you can definitely see that. So it, it's reading at three quarters of a tank right now. Temperature gauge down here with four bars, large tachometer, and then the speedometer. What I find interesting about the speedometer is that it shows three digits all the time. So it says zero, 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 and then it reads out as you're going. That's kind of interesting. Side stand indicator there, which is that little icon gear position indicator. And then you've got a bunch of lights down here for headlights. Uh, a lot of this is your phone interface, which we're not gonna show in this video because it would take way too long. If you guys wanna see how the phone and infotainment, navigation, all that stuff works, let me know and I'll make a separate video about that. Uh, so then you've got light dummy lights on the side like neutral light, you know air lights uh, things like that A lot of these go away when you start the bike and start and start riding just like all other modern bikes do So I kind of already showed this but if you want to go into the menu and change settings What you do is you hold down this right button here So I just held it down for about a second then you can go in here and configure all your different options Change your dashboard units look at your service information uh, You can customize the riding modes. We're going to cover the riding modes here in a second uh, Vehicle you the cool some cool things that it has. I forgot to mention that it has an emergency brake feature which flashes the turn signals, the rear turn signals, when you brake aggressively. So I have that turned on. That's awesome. I don't know of any other bikes that do that from the factory. I think that's an awesome thing. You can turn your headlight mode to auto or you can force it to be on all the time. Uh, display, we talked about that. So anyway, we're not going to go all that now. So let's talk about the riding modes. So in order to change the riding modes, and you can do this as you're riding, uh, you use your right thumb to hit this button here. I really like like that. It's very, very easy to do. So when I hit that button, you can see here that I'm starting to cycle through the different riding modes, urban, off-road, individual, and explore. So it gives you four riding modes. Urban mode and explore mode are pre-programmed and you cannot change the settings. However, in the off-road mode and an individual mode, you can customize those to be set up however you want. Now, one thing I wanna say, when you, let's say you have the bike in off-road mode, you've got your ABS turned off, you've got everything set how you want, you power cycle the bike as you do when you're out on a ride, when you're out on a tour. When you turn the bike back on, your settings are saved. You don't have to, um, like so many bikes out there, that's so frustrating where it loses your settings and you have to turn the ABS off again, turn the traction show off again. No, this bike saves it when you boot back up. Thank you, Aprilia, for doing that correctly. I just can't say how nice that is. So what do the riding modes actually do? So the riding modes uh, control a few different aspects. Let me go in here to the menu to show you what I mean. So if we go in here to the riding settings menu and I go in here, now you can see uh, like I mentioned, Urban and Explore are preset. So what are these things here? This is called Aprilia Performance Ride Control, I think, APRC is what they call it. Uh, AEM is Aprilia Engine Management. That's the throttle response, how fast the throttle responds to your input. It does not change the power of the bike. It doesn't make the bike faster. A lot of people don't understand riding modes and how they work. It just means the throttle is more progressive. So you've got AEM is the throttle response. AEB is Aprilia Engine Braking. You can control how much engine braking you want. ATC, Aprilia Traction Control, you can control how much slip you want from the rear wheel. ABS is the ABS setting. Now, you can have ABS intervention. You can have a lot of intervention for normal road riding. You can have less intervention. You can have a setting that turns the rear ABS off, leaves the front on, which is what I use for off-road. Or you can turn the ABS off entirely. So they give you everything, and I think that's awesome. Overall, the electronics on this bike, I'm finding them to be superb. And it has everything you need, nothing you don't, and they're easy to control.
So like I mentioned, you can customize off-road an individual. So in off-road mode, if I want to set that up differently, I can do that. I can change my traction control, my engine braking, uh, my uh, throttle response. You can reset it to the factory settings if you want. Now, some of these are a little bit confusing. I think the, uh, the throttle response, like one is most aggressive and three is less aggressive, but the engine braking works the opposite way. So it's a little bit confusing and you do kind of have to read the manual to understand that. But I think once you get these set up, you're not gonna really change it that much. And then of course, when you're back to the main screen, you're not gonna be doing what I just showed on your ride. You're gonna be doing that at home to set it up. And then as you're riding, you simply just toggle riding modes with this button here and it coordinates everything with the ABS, all the settings that you program. So easy to use and I really, really appreciate that. And when you have the when you have the traction control pull up here on the dash, again, when you're riding, if you want more or less slip, which is especially useful off-road as conditions change, you can simply go up and down. This is very reminiscent to the rally mode on the KTM 890. However, you only have four levels instead of nine, so I would like to see more levels, but the electronics on this bike are not as sophisticated as some of those more premium bikes like the KTM 890 or bikes like that. All right, I know that was a little bit long, but that's what we do here at Big Rock Moto. We go in depth. So if you've stayed here for this whole time, thank you so much. Hope you found it useful. Now, stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're paying attention because I've got seven or eight videos planned out in this series. This is just the second installment. So we're going to obviously be riding the bike on and off road. We're going to be uh, dropping it and lifting it up. We're going to be showing you the passenger seating. We're going to be doing everything that I can possibly think of with this bike. We're going to talk about the maintenance issues. So stay tuned for all of that. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's installment questions comments put them down below um, thank you so much for watching if you appreciate what I'm doing here please support the channel and there's ways to do that in the description below other than that ride safe and we'll see you out there